Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is well. Today, it's we're going to get into some pretty major headlines. And also, at the end of the show, some more on the next president, Donald Trump. He will likely be the next president, despite the adversity he seems to be facing. I believe, as you guys know, that it's all by design. To prompt you and trigger you to give your vow, to give your vote to defend conservative values and when you think you're doing that you're actually giving consent to all the rest of what comes along with Donald Trump and first of all I want to address a large super chat that was left yesterday by C Raymond and I want to thank him again for that he asked me to share an email live on air and I unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to do that because it does conflict with my belief system and um, the attachment, uh, he there were some claims that uh, Jude was the, a sister of Christ and possibly a woman, Holy Spirit, and I just don't agree with, with that. But again, thanks for the support, and um, you know, it's always appreciated. We're not always going to agree on every single thing, um, and also welcome this person if he wanted to share his views on you know on the platform. I'm not going to delete someone for their ideas and views. Okay. Uh, as long as it's done with good taste, um, you're welcome to leave a comment about that on the channel, even though I don't agree with it. And that just goes to show you, I don't just delete people who I don't agree with. It usually comes along with a negative attitude. That's what I don't like to deal with. Um, uh, people bashing or things like that, or telling us we're wrong or we're shills or what, then those chat, those will be deleted, but you're welcome to share your ideas on this channel, whatever they may be. Um, okay, so let's get into some of these headlines. Once again, Teflon Don, some of you have coined Teflon Don, and he, 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 apparently they have reduced his judgment fine almost by two-thirds. You know, when all was dire and he was up back up against a wall and it looked like it was the end for Donald Trump, once again, he evades serious consequences for what they tell us are his actions i don't even believe any of this stuff to me it's all just smoke and mirrors they were just threatening to confiscate his properties and everything else a few days ago just 48 hours ago they were talking about picking off his properties and everyone was like he has to be good because the democrats are going after him well that's exactly what they want you to think and it's working he has to be good if the Democrats hate him so much, but the Democrats don't really hate him. And that's what we're going to demonstrate to you today at the end of the show when I actually show you that Bill Gates was a tenant in one of Donald Trump's buildings. I'll say that again. Bill Gates was a tenant in one of Donald Trump's buildings. Not too long ago in history, actually, as well. Now, what else is going on? Well, all of this back and forth and near misses is orchestrated to lend Trump credibility to his followers and trigger them to vote, to give a vow. The word vow comes from the word vote. The Bible specifically forbids us from giving a vow to anybody. I was just reading or talking, I think Ree was showing me something about Caesar and how Caesar actually told people to take a pinch of incense. A pinch of incense to give their consent that's all they had to do was give a pinch of incense to show their loyalty to Caesar and those who didn't do it guess what happened to them Christians who said our oath is to the Most High they were persecuted and killed all they had to do was give a pinch of incense. So how is that any different from casting a vote? How is that any different from casting a vote? Now you can look this up yourself. Pinch of incense, Caesar. And it'll tell you right there. And Christians would not do it. And it cost them their life. How is that any different from voting? And think about that and pray about that. Pray about it hard. Because these are the kinds of things when you give your oath and allegiance to either side, that does not make God happy. 
Now, so what's going on with this? Well, <laughs> New York Court Appeals on Monday agreed to hold off collection of Donald Trump's $450, $454 million fraud judgment. Now, even this number is loaded, right? 45, 45th president. It's a, in a mirror, 4554. Okay. They dropped it all the way to 175 million. And if Trump does, it will stop the clock on collection, and prevent the state from seizing his assets while he appeals. So they're making it look like he's steeped in all of this drama. But again, I don't think any of this is real. So that's what's going on with this. Now, what else is going on? Well, check this out. A mountain lion killed a man and injured his brother. Let's listen to this real quick here. Afternoon, an 18-year-old a man killed and another injured. A horrific attack in the woods. A man killed and another injured by a mountain lion. A fatality like this is extremely rare. Deputies say at around 1 in the afternoon, an 18-year-old man reported he and his 21-year-old brother were attacked by a mountain lion in a remote area near Darling Ridge and Skid Road in Georgetown. The two brothers, they were... Skid Road? Like Skid Row? Wow. ...were out shed, uh, antler shed hunting, um, and that's when they were attacked. When deputies arrived on scene, they found the 18-year-old with severe injuries to his face and took him to a local hospital and began their search for his older brother. Shortly after their search started, um, they located a, a man down and next to um, that individual was a mountain lion in a crouched uh, position. Deputies fired shots to scare the mountain lion off. They say the 21-year-old man died where the attack happened. When you hear about stuff like this, you get a little bit more on edge. Longtime residents tell us although mountain lion sightings are common in the area, this is the first time they've heard of a deadly attack happening. I was surprised to hear that it was attacking, that it was going after humans. Um, it's not uncommon for them to go after livestock, and we've actually had that happen to some of our livestock. Everybody's aware of it. The only precaution you can take is, you know, keep an eye on your, keep an eye out. But the mountain lions are sneaky, and you'll never see them really. For now, deputies ask residents to be on alert. Being aware of your surroundings, having no some form of. So, unbelievable! Animals have lost their fear of people. Now, there's all kinds of theories as to why. And I would not disagree with most of the theories that you guys have come up with. Some of you said, oh, well, maybe these people have been changed. Maybe they've been altered. Maybe they had something injected into their body that changed them into something not so human. And this is why the animals are not afraid anymore. And I completely agree. That is a possible theory as to what's happening with these animal attacks and animals not being afraid of humans anymore. This is really, really weird. Now, we saw all of this. What was the uh, movie that came out where they showed all the deer that were unafraid of the people and they were walking in very close proximity to the people? And it was like a sign, wasn't it? The deer came up through the bushes in the backyard. Just weird. So, that's what's going on with this mountain lion attack. Two brothers, 18 and 19 years old, one of them killed by a mountain lion. If they were out antler hunting, they were probably, uh, you know, in decent shape. Uh, and they could not ward off this mountain lion. And who knows how big this thing was. Uh, they don't really say how big this mountain lion was. Let's see if there's anything, any talk of how, what the size of this thing was. So they did find the mountain lion. It was euthanized. It says here, according to the article. And what else here? Uh, traumatic injuries. Oh, it looks like 18 and 21 years old. The one brother probably gave his life to try to give the other brother a chance to get away. And once these animals start slashing, uh, you know, then it's pretty much over. Now, there's all kinds of implications for this. You know, a lot of people go out jogging and running. And that just becomes a moving target for a mountain lion. Now, this isn't to fear you from going out in the woods. But, you know, here is a, a, a place of like California where I don't know what the gun laws are. But something that could have saved their life would have been a weapon, right? Even a handgun. You know, walking around antler shed hunting, which is uh, something people do. Uh, we've been talking about maybe wanting to do that as well. Walking around trying to, because the antlers, uh, they've all shed their antlers. 
the deer and some elk do this too during this time of year and had they had a handgun which is probably illegal in california right then they could have fired off a warning shot or at least shot at or shot the mountain lion before it hurt somebody or killed somebody right and they might have had injuries but it wouldn't have been life-threatening injuries so <laughs> Can't call the police when you're out in the middle of nowhere. Can't call fish and game or wildlife to save you from a mountain lion attack. So what's the inference here? The inference here is what they're telling you is just don't go out there. Or you're taking your own risks and chances by going out there. We can't protect you and you can't protect yourself because it's illegal, right? And, uh, you know, there's also such a thing called, um, what is it called? Like if you're out in the wilderness and you have a weapon and it's outside of a hunting season they assume that you're doing something wrong the burden of proof to prove that you're not doing anything wrong hunting out of season these things falls on you and you get drug into court and they just assume it's called probable cause and i've seen this happen like for instance if you're walking with a fishing pole and it's not fishing season they can write you a ticket. They'll say, oh, you have a fishing pole in your hand. Where are you going with it? You're in proximity to a place, a closed body of water that you're not allowed to fish in. And I've heard stories like this over and over again. They call it probable cause. And you can actually be fined before you've even done a crime. So, this is the world we live in now. Okay. Now, what else is going on here? Well, the internet is imploding. What am I talking about? Massive changes coming to Google Chrome. Now, they mentioned Google Chrome here, but Google Chrome is the most one of the most widely used browsers, so this will absolutely affect the rest of the internet. And what they're saying here is they're dropping cookies from the browser. Now, this is a good thing. I use the Brave browser, and it, it doesn't allow for the cookies, right? Cookies basically tell the computer all your private information so the computer can talk back to you and give you things that they suggest in the way of ads and things like that to shape your experience or how you purchase right so it creates a little bit of an echo chamber for you and that's what exactly what cookies do well here's what they say and what is really happening they're saying that this will mean the that this will change the way that advertisers advertise and websites work flattening of the medium and small sites who depend on these cookies to stay afloat and what this really sounds like to me is an excuse to demolish dissent and roll everything up into a mainstream conglomerate websites for all their information and news and those would be the only ones that will, would be able to survive this so in other words they built a system of cookies they made everybody invested in it, made everybody use it, kind of like cell phones, right? They create a system, everybody uses it now, and now they're going to come through and destroy it, demolish it, control demolition. Okay, so let's read a little bit about this so we can understand it a little bit better. Later this year, through its Chrome browser, will end the use, the use of third-party cookies, technology that can track across websites to target them with personalized advertising, the transition won't come without pain. While Google's initiative is meant to shield the privacy of users, many of the sites they rely upon and cherish could hang in the balance as a result. The move represents a profound remaking of the advertising world and user experience on the Internet. The open web is going to suffer, said Anthony Katzer, chief executive, blah, blah, blah. The long tail of the web, the mid-size and smaller publishers are going to be very impacted. So, control demolition of the Internet. Again, like I said, flattening the websites to where all the traffic goes to the big giant websites and all under the guise of oh your privacy we're taking away the cookies so you could have more privacy but really this is a takeover is what it amounts to now what else is going on well in this article more changes coming to the national feminine league i mean the nfl national football league they have now made some rule changes. They're banning hip drop tackles. You guys, I'm telling you, in five years, it's going to be NFL flag football. Let's read this. Unbelievable. NFL has officially banned its hip drop tackles. Sounds like hip hop. After a vote at the spring owners meeting. Now, this, was the, this used to be the exact way you tackled somebody. 
you grab them by the hips and you fall down, right? That sounds like the safest tackle, but now they're saying this is unsafe. Wow. So every year, it seems like more and more stuff is getting changed. Players are having to adjust, and I think it's all fake anyway. So, But this is just silly. Flag football is next. Now, there's been a lot of talk about microplastics. And now they're saying they're finding microplastics in ancient remains. <laughs> wow. They're saying that... No matter how careful they were in preserving ancient remains, that it's so pervasive in our own environment that it's even infecting things that they're trying to preserve. This is what they're saying now. Okay. Now, what's really going on here? Well, we're not going to read this whole article, but what's really happening? Why are they telling us all these stories about microplastics being found and everything? Well, here's what I think. I believe this is programming so that when somebody discovers particles of foreign nature in our bloodstream, they'll just say that it got there a different way. Or they'll say, that's just microplastics, right? This is what they'll say. They'll just, it'll be the cover story for whatever it is that they're putting into our bloodstream already through pokers and stickers and all these things. That's what I think. That's what I think is this is all headed to because they've been talking way too much about microplastics, haven't they? And then this begs the question, what if the whole plastic container that they gave to us, right? They made plastic bottles. What if this whole thing was leading into what they were going to put into us later? What if this is the whole reason why they came up with plastic bottle technology? They're like, okay, first, we'll make all these plastic bottles, right? And everyone's going to use them because they're so convenient. We'll use the black goo out of the earth, which is how plastic bottles are made. They're actually made with oil, believe it or not. We'll use the black goo, and that'll be the inside joke. Because that's exactly what we're going to put inside people when we're ready to do it. When we're ready to launch our devious plan. And then what they'll do, and then... Over the course of several decades that everyone's been using plastic bottles, now they say, oh, everyone has plastic microplastics inside of them, which is their little inside joke. Ha ha, we did it. And now when people find microplastics, which is really the black goo all over again, right? Then they'll just blame it on plastic bottles. And this is how devious the enemy is and how, how easily we in society are fooled by all this. Now, I'm not saying that everyone that has microplastics in them has the black goo. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it'll be a cover for something else they've put in. It's going to look very similar, right? And I bet, and I'm wondering if even they're even telling the truth about people having microplastics in them, if that's even real or not. So, bizarre world we live in, you guys. Now, let's get into some of these other stories here. Well... <laughs> For some reason, the entertainment industry is going after specific people in these humiliation rituals. Specifically, New York. Now, if you hadn't heard by now, New York has extended its statute of limitations for victims of sexual crimes. And it's not that I don't think all these people shouldn't be rounded up. Because I feel all these people are, are, are doing stuff like this when they get to a certain level. It's actually probably part, part of the requirement Right, Part of their resume requirement to be in the club so that they can be controlled. Because then they can say, hey, we'll, we'll expose you if you don't do what we say. Right? So, this one, some of these stories, though, are kind of funny. Like, for instance, Sean Puffy Diddy Combs, the Puffy Diddler. Right? I mean, some of this stuff you can't even make up. Because the names actually fit the crime of what the people did. Diddy's Los Angeles Miami homes raided by federal agents. Homeland Security rolled into the diddler. Raided by federal agents on Monday. And they said that he's basically being investigated for human trafficking. So, New York's law talking about opening up the statute of limitations. Department of Homeland Security. 
This is crazy. There are several people in New York that are on this list of people being investigated and raided. And here's the big secret. Notice how none of these people that are getting looked at and investigated are from Epstein's black list, black book list. Right? So it's almost like a bait and switch. They're like, we'll just, we'll give them something. We'll go after all these other people and it'll cover our tracks for what we did on Epstein Island. Because you would think that there'd be hundreds of people coming out of Epstein Island, right? And coming forward under this New York law because New York and Florida were closely connected in all this. But instead, we get all these has-been nobodies. And then you have to wonder if any of this is real, too. Maybe they're like, hey, Puffy, we need you to pretend like you're a diddler and we'll give you some money. We know your career's over. You got to do this one for us. And then you'll get smeared in the news a little bit. But then after like two years, everyone will forget about it. I mean, this guy was just in a commercial, wasn't he? About pineapples or something during the Super Bowl. And then now he's the diddler. So anyway, I left a comment calling him a diddler. And apparently the story didn't like that. And it said, your comment has been removed. So you're not allowed to say diddler, apparently. <laughs> Even though it sounds a lot like fiddler. Anyway. What else is going on? Well, apparently there's been a ma mass casualty event. I got some video footage for this for you guys. An entire bridge collapsed in Baltimore. Thanks, Rebecca, for sending me this this morning. I had no idea about this story. This is breaking news. Container ship crash in a Baltimore bridge. And freedom crashes into the ocean what am i talking about well the name of the bridge is the francis scott key bridge and of course francis scott key wrote the star spangled banner of supposedly the freedom of america and every single minute that goes by americans are less and less free and i think that's the spiritual manifestation of what this means Shipping containers outside markets. We don't make anything anymore. Everything's shipped in. And we're one step away from just the worst thing that could happen to America. Because everything's shipped in. We don't make our own stuff anymore. Look at this footage here, you guys. Unreal. Now, there are at least... Three or four people got pulled out of the water already. There's like seven to ten people missing. There were a bunch of people on this bridge. You can see that the bridge has a bunch of cars on it. As the shipping container hits it, you could see all the cars on the bridge. All the lights go out. And for some reason, somebody was filming all this. And this is, of course, this is icy cold water. We're in the spring. This is very cold water. Ice runoff in Maryland. Look at this. So that's what's going on on the Star Spangled Banner Bridge. The ship that crashed was called the Singapore Flagged Dolly. And these are the headlines, unfortunately. And you pray for the people that were on that bridge. I can only imagine the horror of what you would even do in a situation like this. The Patapsco River live stream showed vehicles traveling on Francis Scott Key Bridge just moments before the impact at 1.28 a.m. Gosh, early hours of the morning. Wow. So let me go back into the chat, you guys, and then... We're going to get into some other stuff today. Next, I'm going to play for you a pretty profound decode that we did a few years ago. It really puts things in perspective in terms of the timeline and connections between Trump, Bill Gates, Big Pharma, going back decades. Decades. And then after this, I'm going to, well, actually tomorrow, there will be more Fringe Binge. And then we're going to do Dogwood Bloom at the Honey Milk Ranch. And I want to start calling it the Godwood, not the Dogwood. God is dog backwards. We're going to start calling it the Godwood instead of the Dogwood. And they're in full bloom around the property. I'm going to show you some footage of that tomorrow. 
But let's take a look at this video that we did from a couple years ago. This is Neil Carroll. I know that everybody who loves you feels you are light. Um, good memories you left me as a little boy playing catch with me uh, in your driveway. Um, you bring me back to uh, a time of innocence, most important, and will help us get through uh, our darkest times. And uh, for that, um, I am forever grateful to you again. Hey, Jimmy. I miss you so much. We had such a perfect night the night before. We put Finn to bed because it was the night before his first day at school, at preschool. And I remember laying in bed. You're doing such a good job. And I think about that all the time and how lucky we are to have had that. Um, the boys are amazing. You would. Enter the stars and good morning, everybody. And of course, this is confirmation that the towers were scale models of a phone booth. Aluminum structures full of money. In this NPR bizarre leave a message for your loved one for 9-11 in front of the One World Freedom Tower. Now if this doesn't solidify some of the findings and revelations on this channel, I don't know what will for some people. This was a feast of booths dark counterpart ritual to mock the Most High and His Son. But of course, the Bible says the Most High will not be mocked. The phone booth. The Feast of Tabernacles. Now, apologies for yesterday and there not being a show. I had some uh, car issues. I got stranded in Mountain Home, Arkansas. And didn't have my laptop with me. Because I was just going on a quick trip over to my property. And gas. Next thing you know, you know, while I'm getting gas, I know you're not going to turn it back on. To jumpstart, I realized harder install gates and nothing but god fearing and loving and you're pretty much everyone's walking around it was a pleasant experience despite the fact that I'm just fast forwarding through this because you guys have already heard this story for three days so i'm glad that our sunday playlist marathon went as well as it did but after the fact uh hold on yeah but says how much was but you know he almost did premium membership and you can loan auto assistant especially that side of the road so i always try to share facts but instead with some coffee for all the folks out there on sunday we left out parasite in that movie takes the view oh boy here we go. and i and so i was trying to see that up and things like that trying to figure out and it's listed in that playlist it's a very important i almost couldn't believe what i was seeing when you posted this in the comments now we've been talking all about Jason Voorhees and the weird synchronicities between Jason Voorhees' life and Trump. They share almost the same birthday, and one of Jason's first killings was an arrow through the chest from underneath a bed. This couple's laying in bed, he stuck an arrow up through this guy's chest, so it was like, boom, we've got ourselves some kind of synchronicity, don't we? And there was a lot more to the whole Jason Voorhees-Trump connection than, than just those two factors. You'll have to go back to those videos to check that out. But here's what I was not expecting. I was not expecting some of the same exact synchronicities with the Omen franchise. Literally, 666 and Omen is all over Trump's life. And I haven't figured out exactly why yet. You know, people want to criticize us and tell us, oh, he's saying for sure Trump is the Antichrist. No, never said that. And in fact, I don't believe he is the Antichrist. 
But that doesn't mean that people aren't working in the Antichrist's behalf to help bring him in. The Devil's Advocate, which of course was filmed in Trump Tower, 66th floor penthouse. Now, the reason why I don't name people, stick tags on people, because of their numerological synchronicities in their life, like when they were born, when their children were born, stuff like that, is because I too have numerical synchronicities in my life. So I believe that the way this, these numbers work is it's who you serve. Do you serve evil or do you serve good? Because everything that the devil does, God makes a counter or has a counterpart for a good side. And there's a good side and a dark side, right? So the number 88 could mean something completely different to the dark side versus the good side. And it took us a while to figure that out. It took us probably a few years before we figured that out. Because in the beginning, I was like, oh, wow, look, I found this number and that means they're evil. Well, then you dig deeper and you start focusing on the good stuff and you see that those very same numbers are used in the light side, in God's side. And he was the originator of those numbers and the devil has hijacked them. Now, that doesn't go for all numerical synchronicities, but for a good portion of them, it does. Now, as you guys know, I was born on the 88th day of the year and there are people very close to me in my life. I'm not going to share as much of my private life anymore because... It does nothing for the trolls. They just use it against me. They don't even realize, you know, that what they're saying is ridiculous. They just use the personal information that I share against me. Like, for instance, people are trying to say that I'm called for an uprising with a voice changer. Duh. Uh, have you guys seen videos of me on in France? There's several videos of me live on camera sitting next to Mark or by myself. There's no voice changer. We are not the same person. They went even as far as to say I'm not black and I don't have children. I've talked to many of you and I've shared pictures with my, you know, my family. It's all on my Facebook page. So when you see people spreading that kind of ridiculous stuff and you see that the channels that they're on are allowing that to happen, you need to make a personal choice about what channels you're going to continue to follow because that stuff's hurtful to the community. It's ridiculous and it's hurtful and it makes all of us look like we're insane. So we need to have personal responsibility in this community and it starts with each individual person. Okay. Myself included. So, some people very close to me in my life were born on the 333rd day of the year and 9-11. So, numbers don't automatically condemn a person. So, I just want you to understand that as well. This isn't a Trump derangement syndrome channel. This is a, if you want to say there's a derangement, it's a derangement against the mechanism of control and deception that has put people completely to sleep. In fact, it's even hard for people to admit that inflation started a long time ago when the $6.6 .6 trillion was spent and most of it given away to corporations. To try and say that that had absolutely zero effect on the inflation that we're experiencing now is in itself a form of derangement about the largest expenditure in U.S. history times three. Times three or four or five maybe. That the entire mainstream media is completely ignoring that Biden is completely ignoring because it's not part of their agenda for us to realize that $6.6 .6 trillion just got spent during COVID. So I put together this graphic back to Omen. I'm skipping around a bit to demonstrate to you that something is very weird going on with the Omen franchise. It seems to be pointing to something now wrap your brain around this because this entire omen franchise was about a man named damien and damien owned thorn industries now who was damien well here's the storyline here let's go back to these this uh wikipedia page for the omen now i'm not going to show you anything about this because in terms of like video of this because this is just i believe that these kinds of films um the omen are definitely the kinds of films that that try to seed negative spiritual uh, activity into your life so i don't watch these kinds of films anymore um <clears throat> a good example of a film another film that does this kind of thing or did some this kind of thing <clears throat> excuse me was the exorcist that was a film i saw as a child that stuck with me for the better portion of the first half of my life was the root of my many of my nightmares. So this is why I don't expose you guys to certain films because some of this stuff is very, very dark. Now, let's get into this. Damien Thorne, a young child, was replaced at birth by his father, unbeknownst to his wife, after their biological child died shortly after birth. 
Then there was a series of mysterious events and violent deaths that occurred around the family. And Damien enters childhood and they learn that he is the Antichrist. So this is the plot of the Omen. Now, we remember just the other day that we had looked at another character named Damien. Who was that? Well, it was Batman's son, wasn't it? The evil Robin. We realize if you can spell Robin's name, R-O-B-A-N, you could scramble that to mean Baron. Damien, the Dark Robin. And so, what we have here is some kind of connection. Now, here's the thing about Thorn Industries. Because if it was just this one connection, I would never ever do a live show or video or decode on something that's so vague. But here we have Thorn Industries. And their first logo was actually a simple globe. Now, this globe seems to match up with the globe that Trump has in front of Trump International Hotel, as you can see here. So we have ourselves another connection. But then, after Damien takes over Thorn Industries, the logo transforms into a giant T. Now, we know that the giant T is Trump's signature logo. Here we have the split. So, we have the one globe turning into two globes. The one globe turning into the Gemini globe. Now it goes even deeper. Because even still, if it was just the things that I'm showing you, I would never have done a decode on this. But there's more. Look at the release dates of the Omen. Both of the release dates. There were two release dates. One in the U.S. and one in the U.K. Both the release dates match the day that both Trump's father died and his grandmother. His father died on June 25th. The release date in the, U in the uh, U.S. And his mother died on June 6th. The release date of the U.K. Now, are these coincidences? Even at this point, I would say, Oh, I probably wouldn't have done a video on this based on just that. But look at when they died. Father, 1999, and his mother, 1966. So we have, and that's grandmother, not his mother. So apologies for that error in this video. 999 and 66. So now it's all making sense as to why Trump made the 66th floor penthouse. It's literally written all over his father and grandmother's dates of death. Now, what is this globe thing all about? Let's go back to thorn industry. Now, what is the thorn? Obviously, it's the crown of thorns, right? Put on Christ's head. Now, thorn could also mean the injection as well. A thorn is a, typically a hollow needle. And when we go back here, and we think about this globe aspect to all this and what this is about a globe. Remember in Gremlins 2, we decoded Daniel Clamp? And I told you it was Donald Trump. Before I even knew that the writers of Gremlins 2 admitted that the character was based on Donald Trump. Remember that? And remember how there were a lot of naysayers. I'm unsubscribing because that's ridiculous. That's not Trump. And then we found out that the writers admitted that it's Trump. This is why you got to stick with this stuff. Because disclosure keeps happening. And remember that in the film Gremlins 2, in which the writers admitted that Daniel Clamp is Donald Trump, he had the, his logo, Daniel Clamp's logo, was the world inside of a vice grip. Let's look it up. Google's not that great. Search for stuff. Stuff used to just pop right up, didn't it? Now you gotta like search for it. So. Let's find the Daniel Clamp. Now, here's the book. Remember Art of the Deal? Well, there's Daniel Clamp's book, which looks a lot like it. Now, interestingly, our Gremlins 2 videos are all... One of them's blocked worldwide. And the other one is uh, copyrighted. So, no one's seeing that one as well. Uh, let's find that. Jeez. Daniel Clamp's building in the movie Gremlins 2. It's the world in a vice grip. Flattened. So, obviously, 
they're channeling the globe that's in front of Trump International Hotel because Daniel Clamp is Donald Trump, right? So, what is this about? Well, in the film Gremlins 2, Daniel Clamp acquires the virus, which is the gremlins that replicate out of control, then he defeats them in the end, and he becomes the hero. Now, that virus in Gremlins 2 came from China. So, there's something to this world thing, isn't there? Now, we remember that Trump's father commissioned that billboard at the World's Fair, didn't he? And, I don't know if it was his father or his grandfather, because that was 1939, so maybe it was his grandfather. I think at that point, his father was like in his 20s. Might have been his grandfather. But anyway, they commissioned a billboard at the World's Fair with Trump's name stylized to look like the RX symbol, or prescription symbol. Now, there's no mention of Trump's father being involved in pharmacies or drugstores in 1939. But look at this. This is the cliff notes of a new TV series purchased by Leonardo DiCaprio. And it's about a serial killer at the Chicago World's Fair. Now, remember, this globe in front of Trump International is a replica of the World's Fair globe in Corona Park. So, let's read about this Chicago World's Fair, different World's Fair. And this book called The Devil in the White City, which Leonardo DiCaprio is working on a TV series for, about the serial killer at a World's Fair. Chapter 3 begins in August 1886 when H.H. H. Holmes takes a train to Inglewood, Illinois, a community near Jackson Park, future site of the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. Holmes enters E.S. Holton Drugs and convinces store owner Mrs. Holton to hire him. In serious need of help because of her husband's medical condition, Mrs. Holton becomes employer to the doctor, pharmacist, and unsuspecting serial killer. So, this guy, the serial killer, shows up to a pharmacy, and this is where he's able to subdue his victims from a pharmacy. Now, keep your brain wrapped around that for a minute. Because I'm going to show you who the pharmacist in chief is. Let me introduce you to a building that we have not covered yet. Trump World Tower. Here it is right here. See it right there. Trump World Tower. This is the UN building with the 119 encoded into its landscape as well as the Secretariat building having 9 windows, 11 windows, and 10 windows in that order. The 10 being 2001-001. And here is Pfizer headquarters. Right here. Now, it forms a triangle, a trifecta. Trump Tower, Pfizer, and the UN. You think that's a clue as to what they had in store for the world? Constantly poking us with needles? Now, here's an interesting thing behind Trump World Tower. Right here in the Wikipedia page. Put links to all this in the pinned comment after the show. Here in the Wikipedia page. Now, I'm going to pause myself here. Look at the coordinates here. Look at the 58. Doubled up. The Gemini president who would win the 58th presidential quadrennial election. And you see 58 twice in the coordinates, in the exact coordinates of Trump World Tower. Not Trump Tower, Trump World Tower. You have a 58 there and a 58 there. And he would win the 58th quadrennial presidential election. This building was obviously built long before he would become president. All of these Freemasons know exactly when they're going to become president. Let's keep watching here. Put links to all this in the pinned comment after the show. Here's Trump World Tower. And right in here it says that his building was almost not approved. Why? Because it towered over the UN and dwarfed it. Who's really in control here of our reality? You know, I often think to myself, are the people that we're told that are in power and control, are they really the ones in power and control? 
Or is there something more to this story than meets the eye? They then approved Trump World anyway. They approved the building, even though they admitted that it was a zoning nightmare. That it crowded out the UN building. Where all the people who are supposedly rule the world are at. Trump even bought airspace around Trump World. So you couldn't even build around him. So he can be at the top of the hill. Now what could this possibly mean on the spiritual level? That he was able to do this. I'm back in the chat because I want to get your opinion on what you think this could possibly mean. Let's read it out of Wikipedia. so Because people say, oh, you know, you can't just say that. Okay, here it is. He was partnered up with Daewoo Corporation. South Korean Chaebol signed a deal. Prior to construction, many neighbors, including veteran, veteran journalist Walter Cronkite, opposed the building due to its height and lack of distinguishing exterior features. Among the concerns was that it, the tower would dwarf the headquarters of the United Nations across the street. East side neighbors who opposed the project raised $400,000 in a bid to defeat it. Uh, but Trump still won. He won in court. Construction began in 666, I mean 1999, and was financed by German lenders. It was briefly the tallest all-residential tower in the world, with tenants including Bill Gates and a bunch of Russians. I thought Trump hated Bill Gates, yet he was a tenant in his building. You guys, the reality that they're telling us is not what it seems. And all it, all you have to do is step back out of the right-left paradigm and look at these associations and ask yourself, what's really going on here? Now, this Russian aspect is weird because remember in Batman 1966, the Russian Catwoman was seducing Batman and saying, we have to find a way to bring ourselves together. Remember that? They're in the coach on a romantic date. That was the marriage between Batman, Trump, and Russia. And if you try to deny that there's an association between Trump and Russia, you're, you're asleep. Because all of his, or most of his wives, are from Eastern... Wow, look at this. This is why we have to go back through these decodes. 58 million it was priced at. So that coincides with the coordinates that I just showed you that have a 58 in each one. So this building pretty much predicted the 58th quadrennial presidential election. During Europe slash very heavy Russian associations. And of course he was accused of a bunch of stuff with Russia. And I don't believe all that. I think that's smoke and mirrors. But this is what's going on. 1,858 square meters. Priced at 58 million. Confirming everything that we talked about. The number 58. The 1958 Western. With a man named Trump who was selling umbrella syringes. To save the world and he built a wall. 58 story Trump Tower, 58 bedrooms at Mar-a-Lago. Trump won the 58th quadrennial presidential election. 1958 was an important year for Biff from Back to the Future. I believe he, that's when he turned 21 and found the sports almanac who made him a millionaire. Obviously, they're using numbers, aren't they? They're using these numbers for something. Now, what could this possibly infer? Everything that I just showed you. Nobody talks about Trump World Tower, do they? Until now. What do you guys think this means? I'm back. Now, I'm going to obviously pin this link to this video that we did, this decode that we that we just listened to uh, a year ago. October 18th is when this aired in 2022. I'll put a link to this for those of you that want to finish watching that. But it appears to me as though we were right over the target when it came to Trump. Now, I know there's this debate on who the Antichrist is going to be. I don't like to get into that debate. Some people believe that they know that Obama is the Antichrist. I don't know how anyone could possibly know that for sure, 100% sure. Uh, but we're all entitled to our own opinion. But I do not try to guess who the Antichrist is. I just show you the evidence of all this stuff going back decades and decades and decades. I've never, ever in my life seen such predictive programming to show that a person would become president decades and decades before they became president. I've never seen this. Now, I'll give you one example of some pretty profound programming 
that did happen that predicted a, one specific president outside of Trump. And that was George Bush Jr. What am I talking about? Well, George Bush Jr. was literally born on the day and year. The day and year. I'm repeating myself because this is very, very, very important. George Bush Jr. was born on the very day and year that the World Trade Center Board of Directors was established in New York by Governor Dewey. The day and year. There's actually a New York Times article with George Bush's actual birthday and year when they developed the Board of Directors to develop the World Trade Center. And then, of course, he was the president under which they would fall. That's some Twilight Zone stuff right there, you guys. That is some Twilight Zone stuff. And that was some pretty profound predictive programming. But I've never seen so much programming with Trump and all his numbers pointing toward the fact that he would become president. Even Trump Tower has new numbers associated with it that also suggest that he would become president in exactly the year that he would. And those are on some of the past videos that we did. But anyway, I'm back here in the chat with you guys. See what's up with you guys. And, uh, wow, strange times, right? All right. Now, you could also say that we've probably gotten a lot better at finding this stuff than we did during the Bush years and during the Obama years. We did find some predictive program with, with Obama. We found that Obama was the Lion King. And even his children are named after, in variations, after the Lion King characters. And the whole Africa thing. We looked up where Lion King was based off of and where it was like basically how it was filmed. The concept that it came out of. And it was this valley in Kenya. And we found that valley in Kenya. And it was really close to Hawaii, Kenya. A place called Hawaii, Kenya. So in, he wasn't lying when he said he was born in Hawaii. There's actually a Hawaii in Kenya. So there's all kinds of strange stuff going on with Obama as well that we found. But I think we've just gotten better at seeing it with Trump. And this is why there's a lot more Trump content. Identifying, going back in the timeline and identifying foreshadowings of his presidency. And I'm sure that there'll be even more as when he becomes president again the 47th we'll see probably bunches and bunches of 47s everywhere so he's the so it's 9 and 11 the 45th and the 47th presidents 4 and 5 is 9 4 and 7 is 11 so all right what's that what else is going on with you guys Now, you know, let's talk a little bit about Biden because, you know, we can't let Biden off the hook, can we? Essentially, you guys are right. You know, it took me a minute to kind of put it all together. But essentially, what Biden is is really Obama, right? It's Obama's third term. Obama's in the background. That's why you don't hear much from him or about him, do you? Who do you think Obama was close to? He was close to Kamala. Kamala's his vice president. So all this information is being filtered through. And it's essentially Obama's the one pulling the strings. And I do agree with that uh, to a certain degree. And it's perfect. It fits right into what they're doing, right? The dark horse and the white horse running side by side, jockeying for position. And this is what seems to me to be what's happening. The Artemis and Apollo aspects of presidencies, of course, Obama being the Artemis aspect Trump being the Apollo aspect, but both are twins of one another at the opposite ends and extremes of each other, right? White versus black. And this is to maximize the race conflict, which is a huge diversion and distraction while they are leading us and marching us down a specific path that they've already predetermined, which is the final erosion of all American rights, the final scooping up of all the guns, Take the guns first, ask questions later, Trump said. Extreme risk protection orders. And while we're all thinking there's a race problem when there really isn't, 
They're just in the background picking us off, destabilizing American life with immigrants coming in, having everyone in fear, destroying our quality of life with all this. And so that's what I believe is happening. And they're all in the background going, ha ha, we're getting so rich. In fact, I just pulled up a story saying Trump is now richer than he's ever been. Multi-billionaire. While he continues to ask you and I for money for his campaign. He's richer than he's ever been. How is that possible? I thought he lost. I thought he lost all of his support. I thought. Nobody wanted to do business with him anymore because they don't want to be attached to him. But yet, he's richer than he's ever been. Let me try to pull up that story. Just there, There's always skeptics, right? People who want to continue to believe in this man, right? Trump is now richer than he's ever been. $6.5 billion dollars. His media stock surges 50% in NASDAQ. He just went public, tried to raise money. Are you kidding me? And people are still sending him $20, $10, $30, feeling sorry for him. Now you're starting to understand that he is in the club. He is the deep state. And the people around him. That's why they made him win. And that's why they're pretending like he's under all this persecution. How is it that even one person would send a multi-billionaire $10? But apparently it's happening. It's happening. Complete. People have left their brains on the shelves. And all this is fueled by what they perceive as persecution by the left. This is what they, they're believing that lie. When you believe that lie, then you feel sorry for Trump. But when you realize it's all just smoke and mirrors, then you back the car out of the garage. Thanks, Emmer TV. Much love. Thanks for the, the super chat there. Appreciate it. Let's see if there's a message here from you. Doesn't look like it. Thank you. Yeah, they laugh at us because we're the dumb ones who keep sending them money. It's unbelievable. So, Trump made money on the digital dollar. Well, he's uh, he's made money other ways, as I just demonstrated. The unholy alliance with the pharmaceutical companies. He's his Trump World Tower is surrounded by pharmaceutical buildings in the neighborhood of the UN. I don't know what they call that neighborhood. But all the neighborhood around the UN is where all the pharmaceutical headquarters are located. So, this has been in the works for decades. They've been plotting this all along. Hey, we're going to have a pandemic. Then we're all going to make vaccines. We're all going to become trillionaires. This is what it's been happening all along since the beginning. This is why Bill Gates was one of his tenants. They probably had meetings in Trump World Tower. Apparently, The Apprentice was filmed there. They also said The Devil something. Let's look this building up again. Trump World Tower. Now, remember, Trump World was in the movie. It was in the skyline in the movie. The, um, what are they called again? Uh, those little blue creatures. Smurfs. And remember, his own family called called themselves smurfs on instagram they're calling each other smurfs look at this 58 58 he would win the 58th presidential quadrennial election worth 58 million let's see how many times 58 shows up in here this is unbelievable 58 58 look it's even 858 square meters 58 million they're literally laughing at us very few of us see this stuff and then what else was I going to look up in here? Oh, down here it's like, it says, uh, the building also featured heavily in the 2007 film Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. Now, did we look at this film? And The Apprentice was filmed there as well. Crime thr thriller, let's see, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Ethan Hawke, Marissa Tomei, Albert Finney. Look at this. Oh, boy. 
October 26th. This is actually the anti-date of Trump's birthday. What are you talking about, Casey? Let me show you. Wow, October 26th is Hillary Clinton's birthday. We did whole videos on this. October 26th is the 299th day of the year with 66 remaining. Trump's birthday is June 14th, which is the 166th day of the, in the leap year, 166th day with 199 remaining in the leap year. So, Hillary Clinton and George, Bo uh, I'm sorry, Hillary Clinton and Trump's birthdays are opposites of one another. Which is probably why they were good friends. She's evil. Lock her up. She's a great person. Leave her alone. Not my words. His. So all that encoded in the movie that was filmed. Look at this. And they even tell you. Here's the code right here. Here's the cipher. 96. Remember the 69, 96 in the birthdays? Well, the two release dates of the film were 96 and October 26, Hillary Clinton's birthday. Just wow. I think I looked at this film at some point. Um, yeah, that's just weird. Anyway. Just wanted to round out that decode a little bit for you guys. You should get, wrap your brain around that. Okay, I'm back in the chat for a minute. So, now you'd think, oh, Casey, you can't just say all this. Well, uh, it's set in stone now that these birthdays and release dates of film are cast in a specific fashion. We've proven it a thousand times now. A thousand times. We found films that were released on 9-11 that had the Twin Towers in them before the Twin Towers fell. We've seen all kinds of weird stuff like that. So it's done intentionally. It's called sigil magic. We've all seen it in The Simpsons and other, you know, cartoons and animations. Them showing things before they happen. This isn't new information. Now, believe it or not, when I started this channel in 2012, it did, it did sound crazy. Back in 2012, before anyone was looking at The Simpsons and predictive programming and all this stuff. And everyone thought we were crazy. Now it's mainstream. Now everybody realizes that The Sim Simpsons do appear to predict things. Time and time and time and time again. So, you're seeing how now it's all being exposed. So you can't exclude Trump from all this just because someone might particularly like Trump or think he's under some kind of persecution. The programming is there. It's, it's undeniable at this point. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, it's, it's apparent and very clear that he brought the umbrella. Trump brought the umbrella. He did. The umbrella is the needle. And everybody knew it all from the beginning. It was in track down. It was in images of him. You know, it's everywhere. Trump brought the syringe. He's holding a giant syringe right here. That's what it is. They both have the same parts. It's a plunger and a needle at the end. It's always been what it was. It was the man named Trump in track down from 1958. He had an umbrella. He was selling umbrellas. Let's see if Google will pull it up here. Trump track down. 1958 umbrella I typed in. Pretty specific, right? You would think that the image would come right up. Now, this is the scene where he's selling the umbrellas. Of course, there's the tip of the spear. This man's, literally his name is Trump. 1958. Trump would go on to win the 58th quadrennial presidential election. 58 years after 1958. 58 years after 1958 Trump would win the 58th presidential quadrennial election that was 2016 58 years after 1958 they already knew even back in 1958 how old was Trump he was what 12 years old that makes him a very important spiritual aspect to our American politics 
It means he was chosen before he was chosen. Right? So, here he is selling umbrellas. Oh, here's one. Finally found one. Here's him selling an umbrella. With the needle. On the end. So anyway, I hope that this helped put everything in perspective for you guys. And understand, we're not picking on him. We're just showing you the predictive programming. And it is very, very specific. And it is very, very real. And you can't even say that they're just picking on him. Because how do you pick on a 12-year-old boy unless you already know he's coming to do something very, very important? They weren't just picking on him. He's part of them. He's part of the club. And they showed it, showed it to us for those with eyes to see long before he would become president. So, what else is going on? But there's always one. There's always going to be one person in the chat that say, Casey, you're just, you've lost your mind. Well, let's see if we can find the person that sa says that to us in the chat here. Because <laughs> I just showed you guys some pretty profound information. But there's always one. There's always one. <laughs> so. All right. Okay. Well, I love each and every one of you guys. Again, tomorrow going to show you the dogwood or godwood bloom in the honey milk ranch out here in ozarks it's absolutely stunning and beautiful and uh then i'm going to also show you some more of the fringe binge we're almost done with season one and i love each and every one of you i'll see you guys tomorrow take care everyone.